everyone and welcome back to the GSP YouTube channel. Today's video is going to be on inputs and outputs and how you can use them uh, in the software. Uh, on the GSP uh, Facebook page, I kind of did an impromptu video about um, the differences between an input and an output. And um, if you haven't already checked that out, feel free to go over and, and take a look at that. Um, in short, the difference between an input and an output is that an input gives the ECU information and an output is information from the ECU that's given out to some external device. So it literally is as simple as the name implies. If you're putting something in, it's an input. If you're getting something out, it's an output. Um, examples of inputs would be things like buttons that arm your nitrous or your trans brake or uh, an example of an output would be your electric fans or a nitrous solenoid or a boost uh, solenoid, all sorts of different things that you can use uh, depending on what you're trying to do. And I don't want to um, give you guys really examples because I want you to think outside of the box. It's really uh, important that uh, you understand how free you are to use uh, both the software and its capabilities. So. First things first, basic I.O. Let's just take a look at where that's at. Uh, this is the pre-canned Holly's, you know, the, the stuff that comes, that Holly expects for you to use without any kind of, uh, you know, additional work. So if you go to the system parameters icon and go to basic I.O., you'll find that you can set electric fans and your air conditioning, um, that both of those come you know, from Holly in your wizard tunes. They're automatically mapped and everything. Now, there's other things that you can do, like add a second fuel pump, or if you are using a Terminator X and not the Max, this is where you would work on your torque converter lockup settings if you had something like a um, an early model trans with a lockup converter, you know, aftermarket installed. Or if you have a trans brake, you can use a trans brake um, with just a Terminator X and you don't have to have a max just because the only thing the max adds is transmission control for your electronic transmissions. If you got a power glide with a brake, it's all you need right here. So let's just go back to uh, your electric fans. This is going to be a tip um, for, for uh, you know, the tuning side of things. This right here, let me just, you know, I'm, I'm seeing this for the first time. This is just a basic, uh, you know, base cal from Holly. Nothing special that I've done at all. Um, this looks like it would be good settings for something like 175-ish, maybe even 180-degree thermostat. But my tip to you is let's say you've got a 180-degree thermostat. If you don't want the fans to run all the time, I'd set this off temp at 185. So it's gonna come on at 195, it's gonna turn off at 185. And what that's gonna allow you to do, if you if you ever get to a point where uh, your thermostat temp is higher than your fan off temp, the fan is gonna run constantly. You're never actually gonna get below that, your fan's never gonna turn off. It'll come on, the car will run cool, everything's gonna be fine, it's, it's not gonna hurt anything, but you're gonna have a situation where uh, the fan is just always on and there's just no need, there's no need for that. Uh, as far as AC shutdown goes, um, honestly, a lot of guys don't use this, and and that's fine because most of you don't actually have air conditioning on on your setup. But say you got a hot rod that uh, you want to be cool in the summer as well, you want to use your AC shutdown and the IAC kit. Let me explain how these work. Um, whenever you are running the AC. There's a certain RPM that you don't want to overspeed the AC compressor, and um, also it's a parasitic drag if you're trying to go fast. So you can set a max coolant temp uh, and a max TPS where, you know, max coolant temp is an overheating thing. So if you get to 235 degrees, turn the AC off because it's adding heat to your engine. It's it, There's a, a condenser up front that's right in front of the radiator, and all it does is just overheat things. And then there's a max TPS, so that if you go over TPS 50%, it shuts the AC compressor off, gives you that power back, and doesn't overspeed the compressor. Um, this checkbox activates this as an input. Now, it should be known that this is the input activation, but you're actually going to be using it as an output because what we're going to do is trip a relay, 
in line with the air, air conditioning compressor power so that the relay will be, in this case, it will be normally closed and switched to normally, or switched to open with power. So where I'm going at, you know, the long and the short here is you want to break the power wire going to the compressor with a relay, and the way that we do that is with a ground output. It's really important. All of the Terminator X outputs are going to be some form of ground, whether it's PWM, pulse width modulation, or true straight ground. They're always going to be ground outputs. Additionally, you can also have an IAC kick that will, when you turn the air conditioning on, it will give you just a little bit of extra idle air to compensate for the fact that um, you've just added drag to the engine. Um, torque converter lockup settings. This is really beyond the scope of the video, but basically, in short, if you have an aftermarket lockup converter, you can enable this, and then it will give you the option. If you go to your pin map, you will see the torque converter lockup. So what you can do here is automatically lock up based on TPS, RPM, coolant temp, and you can unlock based on how much throttle you give it. And in short, it makes it really nice where you're not sitting there flipping a switch like the old school hot rodders uh, when they wanted to lock the converter up. Uh, you'd have to flip that if you wanted to go to wind up and throttle and stuff. It, it just It's so much easier if you let the ECU control it. And that's what it's here for. Staging. Also outside the scope of this video, there's a lot of really good staging videos out there. And to be honest with you, it really takes a lot of fine tuning per car. There's too many variables to really narrow this down. However, I do want you to know that you can use a single pulse time where when you hit the bump button, it will pulse for this preset time. It'll, it'll you know turn the trans brake off for that amount of time. And that's a good way to bump in. If you want to do the creep function, if you want to like make it where you, when you hold the button, the car just kind of like slowly walks forward, that takes a little more work and you're going to want to go to duty cycle and you got to play with duty cycle and frequency and the time that you're on the button to get all of that to work right. Again, outside the scope of the video, but really cool that Holly has this literally just included. It's just, it's already there. You don't have to do anything special. This comes on a, a simple Terminator X. Um, honestly, it's pretty incredible value. So, all right, let's, let's take it up a notch here. Um, if you go to Toolbox and you go to Add Individual Config, you can go to I.O. and we'll add the default I.O. And that gives you this button. This button is a generic inputs and outputs page. So if you wanted to, let's say you wanted to have a trans temp. So you would type in trans temp for name and you're going to tell it that it's a five volt signal. And then you could come in here and tell it that you either had you can have a custom 5 volt sensor that it, it gives you no pre settings or you could come in here and you know pick anything let's say it's a pressure just because it's easy for me to set up custom pressure all right units of psi we're going to have format means how many decimal places you're going to have or in this case we're going to have one sensor minimum is 0 display minimum 0 uh, forget caution normal for now, and then max, we're going to say, let's say it's 100. Display is going to be 100, and at 80 PSI, I want a warning, and the normal minimum is going to be 50. So I can't have a caution below that. Let's go with 40. There you go. So you'd have, uh, this is bad, this is, hey, the word, this is sort of bad, and then everything above 50 to 100 is all good. Now the way you set this up, if you scroll down, let's say this is 0 to 5 volts, so you'd come down here and put 5 in the max, highlight your entire row, and fill row values. And now let's say that at 5 volts we've got 100 PSI, and at 0 volts we've got 0, and we would fill row values. There you go. You got a sensor. You now have trans pressure that's listed as temperature, and it's a big convoluted mess. Again, I don't want to show you how to do this. I want to show you how this works because I want you guys to think through what you actually are trying to achieve. Now, let's do something a little bit different. 
The same sort of thing works for outputs. If you go into outputs, now remember, it's always going to be PWM minus or going to be ground. It's those are the two options, as you can see right here. Um, let's say that, um, let's say you wanted to, um, man, I'm trying to come up with something. Let's say you wanted to, to, to run, okay, let's just do the boost valve. Let's, that's the easiest thing to, to, and it's most applicable. So let's go in here and say this is a Mac valve. Can't type. All right. Mac valve configure. So the thing about a Mac valve, the way you want to use this is, uh, let's say above TPS of 75% and uh, coolant temp of 100. So let's say we're gonna use two sensor inputs and we're gonna say that both of them have to be activated. And it's gonna be when your TPS is above 75%, and your CTS is above 100. All right. So it's kind of a protection for your engine, right? Like you don't want to have a 30 pounds of boost on the thing whenever the engine's 60 degrees coolant temp. Um, so let's say that's what we're going to use. Now, we would go into PWM setup and set this up to run a Mac valve. And again, I'm not trying to give you guys pre-canned settings. I'm just typing in numbers here, but this is how I would set up a Mac valve. Um, typically, I'm going to do an RPM on the x-axis, and I'm going to do... Uh, a lot of times I'll use target boost outside the scope of this video, but if you're using um, the boost ICF, you can set a target boost. And if you have a target boost and you know what percentage duty cycle gives you that target boost, then it's really easy to... Uh, change the target in that simple ICF and then you just get the boost that you want versus trying to chase uh, you know numbers for the Mac valve here but um, let's just say that that uh, this is let's do TPS so this, is, this will be a simple open loop setup so obviously we don't need to go to zero you know it's not gonna work under 75% so we're gonna start with 75 fill this column so we got even spacing and we're not going to try to make boost at zero RPM. So let's put 2,000 in here. And the engine's not going to turn 20 grand. Let's give this 7,000. All right. Highlight this row. Fill row values. You're going to use this fill row values and fill column values a lot. So just know that. All right. So let's say that at TPS 100%, uh, I want to have, or, or actually 93 to 100%. We're going to call that wide open throttle. I want to have 80% duty cycle on my solenoid. And so that the throttle doesn't just run away or the engine doesn't just run away, I'm not going to put 80 in this whole thing, I can feather this down to, to, to zero. Fill column values, there you go. And let's just say that the engine, for whatever reason, doesn't make as much boost up top. You know, the, the thing comes up and, and is, is running really good and it's consuming that air and it doesn't make as much boost. So we want to cram a little more in there. All you got to do come right in here and let's just do this way over 5,000 RPM we're gonna make this 90% now and you can do the exact same thing we can even do fill row values right here so we can make this nice and smooth we'll fill rows that way we'll grab this fill columns this way bam there you go you got a kind of a, a rising boost curve or at least trying to maintain the same pressure if your engine uh, does this it, I see this a lot where boost will kind of taper off with RPM, and it's just simply because your engine is just breathing better. Um, you got to give the turbo a little extra help to, uh, to really keep the boost coming on. So anyway, that's just an example of how you can use an output to set up a Mac valve. Um, you could do the same thing uh, if you want to run a nitrous solenoid. Um, you can do a second stage of nitrous using this. Uh, I'm trying to think of some other way you could uh, shoot. You could you could do something like turn a light on, turn a shift light on. This you could turn a shift light on with this, no problem. Um, you could um, you know turn a turn a a, a heater on uh, if the you know the outside or the manifold temp is too low. You, I'm making stuff up at this point. You could. Um, you know, shut your fans off if you're going over a certain temp. You can make a custom fan output. If you don't like the way that Holly does this, um, you, you could do that. You could make an, a, uh, an output that would turn your alternator on. You'd have to use a relay, obviously, 
Um, but the way that you would do something like that is, let's say, um, alternator, yeah, I can type, okay. Let's say we're going to use ground, and we're going to go in here and configure, um, and let's say that we want over 500 RPM, we want the alternator on, and... Uh, let's do another one and let's let's do this. Let's but hey, let's turn the alternator off. Parasitic drag. And it'll activate when uh, RPM is below four thousand. And we can add another one. And it'll activate whenever uh let's say throttle position is below seventy five. So there's an example, and this would run a relay that would be in line with a you know a fused 12-volt um, source going to your alternator, and then you'd have to have a you know the 470 ohm resistor in line with that. Uh, switched inputs, you could do this on a deal where um, let's let here you go. This is a great example. Inputs. We're gonna go and make one called race mode, and race mode is gonna be enabled by 12 volts when you put 12 volts on this input race modes enabled. So now when you go to your alternator and you're setting up your alternator, uh, let's say um, when race mode is enabled, then all of this stuff is met, then we'll turn the alternator off. So just an example of how this works. Linked outputs is another thing that you can do. So if you want to do uh, you know, multiple outputs, you can do AC shutdown, uh, when AC shutdown is enabled, then the other thing turns you know on or off as well. There's all sorts of different ways you can do this, and uh, I'm, I don't want to make this video any longer than it has to be. Explore this, guys. Just just think through this. Leave me some comments. Uh, let me know what you think. There's also the timer function in here that that you know you can do um, torque management really easy with this. Uh, you would you would come in here. This is something that's really cool. We're not actually going to use a pin for this. I do need to talk about pin maps, but let's let's call this the uh, one two shift down here on the bottom. I like to go to the bottom with things that are not actually going to be pinned anywhere. It just helps me keep uh, things straight. Uh, and and you know we're going to set this as a PWM just because we can run the timer that way and hit continue. And um, so we're going to do two triggers and both of them come in here and say. Um, well, darn, we don't have it because this is not a uh, this is not a max. But you you could use your your uh, you could use your your automatic transmission current gear to predict which gear you're in and predict the gear shift. And then you would come in here to the timer and say something like, "I'm going to start, you know, 0.7 seconds after the shift is commanded, and then it's going to be uh, you know happening for point." six seconds while the shift actually happens and then you would go set up an advanced table to pull timing. Um, just an example, you don't actually have to map this stuff for these outputs to work internally. Really fast, the way the pin map works, if you make something, you got to actually map it somewhere or it's never going to work. So you got to come in here and say, all right, I'm going to put this 5 volt signal wire, I'm going to put it on A3 input 2. And race mode, race mode is going to be a 12 volt source going to A13 input 3. And then on my outputs, I've got this MAC valve i got to come in here and put. And you go, oh, no, i got way too much stuff. Well, remember, we're not going to use one to shift. And uh, let's say we're going to toss out electric fan, too, so we can go ahead and put the alternator on, on B11. you got to map this stuff, guys, so that the stuff actually knows, the Holly knows where to send these signals. Um, all of the wiring diagrams are online, and you can see which wire goes to which of these pins. Uh, using the wiring diagram. I'm not going to try to quote you because I'll misquote it and then the whole internet will explode. Um, if you got any questions on this, if you want a, uh, a continuation with more details on this, please let me know. I try to make these videos uh, as short and sweet as I can. This one's a little longer than I had hoped for, but there's a lot of really useful information here. And uh, all it is is just basic ins and outs, guys. It's turning circuits on and off, and uh, sometimes you turn turn the, the circuits on and off really fast to make things happen. So that's it for now, and uh, thanks for watching the GSP YouTube channel, and uh, like, subscribe, and leave me those comments. See you guys.